Lisa Fernandez coming out to speak with Langenfeld and the rest of the infield. And all this damage done no. with two outs. There were a couple of me to come harmless ground outs yeah. to start the inning. And then a single by Rodriguez. So Leary's epic two-run home run after the 17th or 18th pitch of the at-bat. Putin Warren with the single. And we see Liam Macon warming up in the bullpen. Well, and to me, I don't think it's Langenfeld right now. It's the fact that she's throwing the same pitch in Hawaii. Being a smart hitting team is just making their adjustments the second time through the lineup. Langenfeld is a remarkable pitcher. She has more than just her screwball, more than just her changeup. And that's probably what Lisa Fernandez went out to the mound to say. Is, hey, you got other great pitches. Absolutely. Jess, how easy is it to hit a pitcher that's predictable? Oh, gosh. And especially because you can visualize. You've seen that pitch over and over again. Amanda Ta'ali'i is up for the second time. She struck out swinging her first time up. You know, I think one of the other things as well is that when Andrea Harrison held that ball that Rodriguez hit to just a single, didn't allow her to go to second base, think of it, a geary up and a base open, and that battle goes on and on. Maybe you have more of a tendency to pitch a little bit wider through the zone. When that runner's at first, you don't want to move the runner into scoring position, so you have a tendency to keep pounding that ball in there and not spread the zone, which Langenfeld does so well. And I think that if you look back over that at bat, had Rodriguez, excuse me, had Rodriguez been at second base, there's a good chance they might have pitched around Aguirre a little bit more and, and had her, you know, chase and not worried if they gave up a if they gave up a walk. Ta'alili finds a hole. Putin Warren goes to third, four straight hits. That one off the change. And now what happens is the go-ahead run actually steps to the plate, and when you have this much power in a team, that can be a problem. Well, and this is the third changeup within that same at-bat. So we're seeing Langenfeld just come consistently with the same pitch, and Tawalili fooled the first time she saw the changeup, but the third time in the same at-bat, you got to expect College World Series hitters. At this point, they're going to be able to adjust. Pinch runner coming in now for Hawaii. Tara Ang Anguano is coming in. We did not see her yesterday, but she comes in to run for Ta'ali'i at first. All of the damage coming with two outs here. In the fourth inning, here's the catcher, Katie Grimes. She popped a short her first time up. You surprised Langenfeld's still in the game? No, not at this point. I, I'd still, she's a senior, I'd still keep her in the game. I might would ask her to, to call some different pitches, throw some different pitches. <laughs> You see the four straight hits after the first two batters were retired. Aguirre with the big two-run homer, but now runners on the corners for Grimes. Well, and Michelle, it's interesting what a few hits and a home run will do to a pitcher. Langenfeld, who has consistently been ahead of every batter she's faced, is now 3-0. So not only just deciding what pitch to go to, but finding that strike zone she was grooving before. And you know what? This is the batter you want to go after. You want to go after Grimes. You don't want Yoshikawa to come up. Yoshikawa, even though she hits out of the number nine spot, has a lot of power. Yoshikawa is the kid that hit the two-run shot yesterday to get Hawaii to this field. And guess what? If Yoshikawa gets up and the bases are juiced, there's nowhere to put her. Now you've got to pitch to her. Full count. Grimes had a big hit yesterday, a leadoff double in the seventh inning before Yoshikawa's home run, so she has already come up with a big hit in this World Series.
Megan Langenfeld throwing a lot of pitches in this inning. At some point, you have to wonder about the fatigue just in the inning. Sometimes when these innings get extended, take a look at how that can fatigue you. This inning, fourth inning, look at that, 42 pitches in just this inning alone. And I think at this point, she really needs to work on seeing what Hawaii's giving her and not giving her. You can't be stubborn and keep pounding your head against that door if you know that door is closed. Pitchers have a tendency to do that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you from experience. Well, and Michelle, I think that's a, a smart thing sometimes, too, is, is Megan is a competitor. And what a competitor is do, they don't give up. And they, she has confidence in her pitches, and she's going to keep throwing them. And who knows, she might be able to sit down Grimes right now with that same pitch. Grimes pops it up. And finally, UCLA gets out of the inning. DeSalvatore gets it. Hawaii leaves a couple on, but after two outs, they get a couple of runs thanks to Aguirre's second home run of this Women's College World Series, and the Rainbow Wahine are back in it. Back here. We are back. Alex Aguirre's dad now has two softballs because his daughter has hit two home runs, one of them a two-run shot to, lead, to take this to a 4-2 to two ball game. A lot of power here. Let's go to our Home Depot coaching clinic. Jess Mendoza tells us how to hit homers. First, you're going to take your weight down and back into your backside, transferring all this power back. Then your upper body is going to get a little bit of a back stretch. Think of it like a rubber band getting pulled back, ready to snap. From here, this power is now going to get released, driving towards the ball. Your weight's going to end up in the middle of your body as you swing through the ball. That is the power needed. It's the difference between a fly ball in the outfield and a home run over the fence. We talked a lot about the different hitting styles, and for UCLA, what they like to really emphasize is starting with the hands first. We talked about it earlier with that bat lag, the barrel of the bat staying back, and then coming through the zone. We'll have more of that, but first, Andrea Harrison sends one foul. So when Jess is showing you that bat lag, you'll see that the bat way behind the hands. Hawaii on the flip side, they're going to have their bat head a little bit flatter through zone. So when they come through zone, you're going to see that bat head flatter. So anytime that ball shows up, they can make contact and drive it into the field of the play. Both power hitting teams, but a little bit different style. UCLA with a couple of home runs today. They had three yesterday, so five for the Bruins and two wins. Hawaii with three home runs. Two wins or two games, I should say, for UCLA. And they have really been on a power surge, have the Bruins. Harrison 0 for 2 today. And she sends it out. Another home run for the Bruins. Harrison had two yesterday and gets another one today. about UCLA's hitting style and the importance of keeping that barrel back behind the hands. And what that does for Andrea Harrison in this at bat is the fact that when she does bring the barrel through, it explodes and is so quick through the zone. She actually gets under this ball, but because of her quickness, because of her hands, and because of that barrel lagging behind, she's able to hit it out, out of the park.